Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. I'm here somewhere. Anyways, um, so we have the Fiodio or Fiodio or Fido. Anyways, who knows what it's pronounced as? It's F I O D I O. Anyways, it's the make. Uh, model number, of course, is in the the title, but in case you're curious, it's F G K B 100. This keyboard is also being put out on Amazon by another seller with a different name on the keyboard. But it's precisely the exact same keyboard, no different at all. Okay, zero. And there's YouTube videos for both on YouTube, of course, so you'll find out it is definitely, you know, the exact same keyboard, just somebody else paid to have their name on it and a different price tag. So we have a magnetic shell. Ooh, kind of cool, right? Um, I actually had to flatten this out myself. If you saw my unboxing uh, video with this thing and the little demo and initial review, this thing was like banana shaped upward, so it was kind of like rocking. Now it sits perfectly flat thanks to a hair dryer. Love technology. And I didn't melt anything. So you do have to be very, very careful when you do this, okay? Um, and of course I had to use my, my bathroom sink to push down on the center uh, with everything. Because it was an upward bow, of course I had to, you know, push the opposite, right, to get it to flatten out. And you just heat up this section in here. But do it carefully if you have to do this ever to one of these things because it's pretty scary if you get it too hot you'll definitely melt stuff malform it and once you do that you're yanked um so anyways i'm pretty good and of course apparently i won 100 percent and it's perfectly flat now so i had to fix that screw up okay so from the unboxing video one of the things i'd mentioned was it was brought to me by Perlator, which is fine. I don't care who the shipper company is, but the actual company I bought it from through Amazon, they didn't even have enough respect for the product because I paid $63 Canadian for this thing to put it in a safety box. They just had it in its own keyboard box, slapped on the label, didn't even tape the box shut. You know, the flap was wide open that you could easily open it up. It could have dumped out during shipping process through Perlator. I mean, these guys handle a lot of parcels, you know, and I wouldn't have blamed them. I would have definitely been blaming the shipper because the shipper is just, I don't know. But, anyways, enough of the crabbing. Let's get on with the pros and cons. Pros are, it's a cool looking keyboard, especially with this particular effect. Um, and it's kind of retro, almost steampunky, but not quite the steampunky I was looking for. I wanted more of the rounded buttons, but... I also didn't want to wait like two or three months from China to get one, but I guess I might have to just bite the dust and do it because I have a really good feeling that this thing may be going back. There's some annoying things about this thing, and um, although I do like this particular effect, it's not what I want. I want solid colors. I want to have solid green, solid yellow, solid blue, solid red, solid purple, whatever. I want solid colors throughout. And I should be able to get that because the instructions say that you can customize it because it tells you customize your lighting. Press M1, 2, or 3, which also, by the way, control fast forward, rewind, play, and pause for your MP3 player on your computer. Um, okay. Um, then press press once and then press and hold until the buttons, the lights go off on the keyboard. And then you can custom adjust the, the lighting um, the way you want it. And no, you can't, because otherwise I would be happy and we would be doing a really good review instead of we are doing a review that's going to end up with a 3 out of 5. So, heads up. Lighting effect. Switching the lighting effect. Well, turns out all you do is just keep pressing this button, you know, click at a time. The rotary button here, just click, and that's one. So, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen 19, and we're back to normal. So the 20th time you hit it, you're back to normal. Anyhow, so you can change the speed too by holding down your function key and using the left and right arrows, you can change how fast things scroll around with crazy lights. Anyways, um, by rotating the knob, 
adjust the volume of your headset or speaker or press the button to make them mute. Well, guess what? Um, that's not entirely true what they just said because they did fail to mention something. You actually have to press and hold the button, then you can control the volume. Then you got to do it again to bypass it so you can get back to being able to just change how much light your keyboard emits. Okay? So, again, very poor instructions here. Same as uh, the function and arrow keys thing. I found that out from another YouTuber's video because I was like, hey, that's kind of actually cool. I can change the speed of this stuff. That might not be so bad. Or maybe still is, but anyways. Um, but uh, anyway, so yes, it's also hot swappable, by the way. You can unplug it, plug it in. It doesn't matter if your power's on in your computer. It doesn't hurt anything, you know. I mean, maybe back in the days of like Windows 95, 98, NAMI, before we got hot swap USB capability, then it might have been a problem, but not anymore. So you're okay. Uh, it works with any Windows computer, uh, pretty much. Um, you know, not... I don't know about Windows ME, but I've heard them... Uh, other YouTubers talk about uh, Windows 2000 right on up to the current Windows 10, which I'm running the current Windows 10. So it should work fine for Windows 11, hopefully, unless Microsoft puts a bug in their OS to do some more damage, like that TPM module thing they're doing to us all. Um, but anyways, continuing on, what do I really think about this thing? Well, at least now that this is flat since I fixed it, it's actually quite comfy. And it's not that bad, and much stronger magnet, of course, now that everything sits flat like it should. So it's kind of comfy for that. Steampunky style square keys, not bad. Um, they are changeable, so I can rip off all the keys and put on regular steampunk keys if I want, uh, which wouldn't probably be a bad idea. However, what I'm really upset about is the customization feature of M1, M2, M3. These are nothing more than memory locations, so you can't really customize um, what you want. Like, I want green for the whole thing. I can't get green for the whole thing. I can't get purple for the whole thing. I can't even split the difference in half and get two, two nice colors or even divide just, you know, the three the way I want them. Yet, the instructions say you can customize it the way you want it. Bullpunky, that's a lie. Okay, this was $63 Canadian to my door. I mean, free shipping too from Amazon. And I thought, you know, I was getting a good keyboard. You know, 19 lighting facts, plus you can customize up to three. You know, and the word that every time you anybody hears the word custom, and I'm no different than you guys, when we hear the word custom lighting that we can do, that means we should be able to do it where I want all green keys, I want all yellow keys, I want all blue or all whatever. We should be able to do that. We can't. It's not possible. It's impossible. In fact, I've tried every darn combination I can come up with and not going to happen, okay? So you're kind of really stuck with, you get to mix and match parts of presets, but that's about it. Um, and even at that, you're not really doing much, okay? Um, you can change the speed of the lighting effects, you know, as they scroll around and stuff. You can make them go faster or slower, whoopee ding. Um, you know, I mean, but as far as anything solid, this is the only real solid setup here for the whole darn keyboard. And it's like, okay, so we got kind of like a yellowish kind of color here. We got green here. We got purple here. We got blue across here. We got red for our number keys. And then everything else is white, other than W, S, A, and D, which are your common keys for movements for left, right, forward, and backwards on a lot of your first person video games. Okay, so. And, of course, we do have red on the outside lining here, along with the green. So there is some niceness about this, as far as the way they did the coloration. But, on the other side of the fence, you can't customize. And, you know, I mean, my other gaming keyboard, yeah, it was only one color of blue. But I could make it pulse, very slowly, or, you know, type of thing. And it was all one solid color, which, you know, honestly, I didn't mind having just all blue. You know, because my fans and my computer tower are blue. You know, but I wanted something different for my keyboard because I also recently upgraded my mouse to one of these Havoc mice, which are pretty cool because you can scroll multiple colors or do other stuff with it, change it around, and it's like, cool, I love this stuff, right? <coughs> but what I don't like is a pulsing keyboard. I'm trying to play a video game or I'm trying to type, especially when it's dark. I need all, I need whatever backlit it can give me in solidness 
that is appealing to me. And sorry, but this entire mixture isn't appealing to me all the time, okay? Um, but we do each have our own preferences and our own opinions. So, in the end story, it is a very well-built keyboard. You can replace the key switches when they wear out. You can even rip off all these switches and put regular typewriter uh, round ones that you can buy for, for keyboards. So you can actually turn it more into a steampunk keyboard without spending like $300, which is kind of nice. But your color problem is where your big problem is. You can't customize the way they say you can, because they say you can customize up to three presets any way you want, but you can't. Okay, um, this is the only solid one of them all, as far as, you know, nothing's moving, nothing's going eh, all over the place, right? Um, and the layout, although it's not bad, I wouldn't want to stay with this layout all the time, because like I said, I want an entire green light, or entire blue, or yellow, or red, or whatever I want, depending on my mood, and I should be able to customize that like the instructions say, but I can't. Also, the instructions don't tell you about function arrow keys, for being able to speed up or slow down the speeds of the 19 presets, which this is one of them and there is no speed because there is no movement, so basically 18. Um, so they don't even tell you that. I found that out from another YouTuber. Um, what else have we got? Okay, speaker control. Press and hold on the round button and then let go. So you gotta hold it for a few seconds, let go. Then you can turn the knob and control the volume of your computer. Then you have to press it again in order to regain control back as far as your lighting goes, if you want to maybe dim things down more, okay, you can do that. But you have to mess around with that knob to do that. Um, it's nice that it's a complete rotary knob that just goes endlessly, you know, so there's like no, no stopping point, which is nice. But um, on the other side of the fence, core shipping. Had to fix the thing myself for the um, wrist rest. Total farceness on the whole you can customize the keyboard with one of the three presets the way you want it no you can't okay um i find that most of the presets in here are absolutely and utterly annoying okay and it messes me up i tried to get along with it okay i've been messing with this thing all last night up till three in the morning um you know and i messed with it a lot yesterday and a little bit here and there today and honestly, the thing is not even worth the money they're asking for it, okay? It's, it's like $20 to $25 way overpriced for one. Number two, the poor shipping is definitely taking a hit in there. Nothing is perfect. I get it, okay? Lack of proper instructions, another problem with this thing, okay? They don't tell you about the feature of function and arrow keys. We had to learn that from another YouTuber. It's not covered in here for some reason. Instructions. You have to have a magnifying glass just to read the darn things. Um, unless you got the sight of a hawk, in which case you still might still go against you. Either way, it is not all that they say it is. Okay, there's a lot of misleading things about this keyboard. Now, it is quality built, I'll give it that. It's nice you can change your key switches as they wear out. So, for the long haul, this thing's going to last a long time. You can also rip off all the keys, because they do give you a tool for that, not just for cleaning purposes, but you can also buy custom keys. So if you want to change the kind of keys from the square ones here to, say, round typewriter style, you can do that. You can buy those keys on Amazon. They have them. Okay? And you can do your little upgrade that way. Um, so, good and bad. But, three out of five. Would I recommend this? Only if you can live with the features that it has and the lack of features and the BS line about the being able to customize the way you want things on the three different presets. If you can live with all that stuff, then by all means, go ahead and buy it. It's going to be a fantastic buy for you. But in my opinion, for those of you who are much like me, that when we, when we see you can customize this way you want, we expect that. And I expected that I could do all my keys in a color or a color per key type of thing and rotate them through the rainbow of the LED world, which there's only so many colors anyways, but you get the idea, right? Thing is, we can't do it, okay? Um, that is darn annoying that they would say something and it doesn't actually work as it should, right? But we're also not any stranger to this happening with false and misleading advertisements anyways, right? So... But we don't have to suck it up either. That's the other thing. And I can easily send this thing back, which I likely will be. I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of 
I'm a little on the fence. I'm going to talk it over with the wife a little bit more and, you know, maybe she can knock some more sense into my head or something. I don't know. Uh, but I'm also going to take another look at Amazon and see if there is something that is more to what I'm, all, I'm after without costing me, like, you know, a mortgage payment kind of thing, right? Um, because there are some really expensive ones up there that are literally like seven, eight hundred dollars for a keyboard. Like, who does that? Other than the one percent, right? And I'm not the one percent. So, there you have it. There you got it. This is a full out blown review for you guys. It's everything I got that I could offer you for info on it. There is nothing more to learn or know about. And, um, yeah, to each their own. But it's your choice if you want to spend your money on this. Um, if you're like me about all of this, then likely probably wouldn't be a good idea to buy it. But if you're into all that other freaky weird stuff that is just more for kids than anything, then by all means go ahead. Now, the stationary layout though, it's not bad, you know, but it's also not capable of doing the other things that it says it can do. Because I would have liked to see solid greens everywhere, or solid blue, or solid yellow, whatever, right? I want to be able to do that with the customized features. Then I could set up three presets, like, this would be my main one. And then I would have, you know, green for something else, or yellow for something else, whatever. But, according to the instructions, we can, but according to reality, we can't. So there's your customization gone out the window. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. You guys know we keep it real on this channel. Catch ya.